All right, we move on with part two. Now we're gonna look at trigonometry, okay? Or more precisely, right triangle trigonometry, because that's the one we use for physics, well, at least for, for our class, okay? So normally, if you're given a right triangle, oh, wait, let me, let me state the fact that, sorry about that, Dis uh oh disregard the notification. I just saved the other video. Um, there you go, now we have a right triangle, right? So when you have a right triangle, let's say if I were to ask you to find the hypotenuse, the longest side, which is this one over here, right? And you do A squared plus B squared equals C squared, right? The Pythagorean theorem, very famous. And if you do that, you'll find that this is 10 meters, right? We're using units because in physics we deal with actual things, right? Because 8 squared, well, 8 squared is 64, plus 6 squared is 36, the square root of 100 is 10, so there you go. Now, this thing right here, this symbol, it's called theta. I want to spell it. Theta. It spells like this. Do not set beta with the B as in Bravo, but theta, like when you say you think theta, okay, that's how you say it, theta. All right. So, just like we use X and Y to represent variables in math, we use every single letter to represent letter. I mean, to represent variables in physics. For angles, we use Greek letters, right? This is theta. So, when you see a Greek letter in a right triangle, it probably represents an angle, okay? The measurement of an angle. Okay. So now, we have to use the famous Sokotoa, right? Trigonometry. So that's how you find the sine, cosine, and tangent. And to not make this video very long, I have all, well, not all the functions, right? The, one we're, the ones we're going to use, we have sine, cosine, tangent. And then I have the reciprocal ones. Well, I'll talk about those later, right? So Sokotoa, I'm saying so a lot. So ka toa is a way to remember your trigonomet trigonometric functions, right? So the sine is equal to opposite over adjacent, just like it says right here. I want to uh, underline the letters. Sine equals opposite of, uh, over hypotenuse. I don't know if I said adjacent. That was my bad if I did. So, so sine opposite hypotenuse, ka cosine adja adjacent hypotenuse toa tangent opposite adjacent well what does that mean opposite to what adjacent to what okay we have to have a, a, an angle to use as a reference in this case we're going to use theta would be our angle of reference which means that the side opposite to theta opposite is that way right Think about you're in the room, you're looking to the opposite side. Well, in this case, this is the opposite. Wait, let me write it over here. This is the opposite side. Adjacent, just a fancy way to say next to. So the adjacent side of theta, the one that's next to it. Now you can say, well, there's two, right? You have this one and this one. However, the longest side is always the hypotenuse. Therefore, the adjacent has to be this one here. So this is the adjacent. And the longest side is always the hypotenuse. There you go. So just as an example, if you wanted to find the sine of theta, this is how you do it. Sine of theta equals opposite divided by hypotenuse. Our opposite side is six meters. Our hypotenuse is 10 meters. So if I were to ask you find the sine of theta, this is acceptable, this is correct. Well, in this case, the, the meters cancel, right? So you could say the sine of theta is simply 6 divided by 10, and you can simplify, that would be 3 divided by 5. So that's the sine of theta. 
a fraction, right? Because you're dividing the opposite side by the hypotenuse. Hopefully that made sense. Now, I'm going to continue. We'll talk about the reciprocal functions, right? This is called reciprocal function. Now, if you think about it, you're flipping, right? So for sine, we have sine equals opposite over adjacent. For cosecant, this is called cosecant, is hy hypotenuse over opposite. So you flip it. Now, there, there's a, another way you can think about those. So the cosecant theta is also 1 over the sine of theta. Numerically, we'll get you the same thing. So you decide how you want to go about it, right? So if, I, if your homework is asking you to find sine and then cosecant, but once you find sine, you can just do the reciprocal right here. And then they'll get it'll get you the same answer, or you can just follow this. Uh oh, this one over here. It's up to you guys. It's really up to you. Okay. And same thing here for the secant. The secant of theta is not only the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent, but also one over the cosine of theta. And cotangent. Theta is equal to 1 over the tangent of theta. Okay? Again, this one's called cosecant. This middle one is called secant. And this one is called cotangent. All right? And you can find each by either using this format or this format. It's up to you. I don't mind which one you use. Let's practice using one over here. Oh, wait, before that. What if I change my angle of reference, right? Now I have not theta, but phi. So it's spelled like this. This is another Greek letter. It's spelled phi. Kind of like when you identify like that. Phi, right? So if I want to write my trig functions, just sine, cosine, tangent. Well, in this case... The sine of phi would be opposite of our hypotenuse again. So this is the hypotenuse. We know this is 10 meters, right? Now, the opposite will not be 6 meters, but 8 meters. Because now, my reference is the angle phi. Therefore, 6 meters is adjacent. And the hypotenuse is always the longest side, so stays over here. All right. So my sine, let me move a little bit to this side, of phi is opposite over hypotenuse. Therefore, it'll be 8 meters divided by 10 meters. And you can simplify. I'm not going to do that. I just want to show you. The cosine of phi would be adjacent divided by hypotenuse and the tangent of phi will be opposite divided by adjacent. There you go. And then you simplify. Okay? Notice how when we tried the sine of theta is 6 over 10. But the sine of phi is 8 over 10, okay? I know you can probably spot the relationship of sine theta is equal to cosine phi, but I, don't worry about that right now, okay? We can deal with that later. So make sure you understand which angle is your angle of reference because things do change, even the tangent, right? The tangent over here would be 6 over 8, and, over, and for phi is 8 over 6, okay? Hopefully that was clear. Now, let's practice. Using the triangle below, find secant of alpha, okay? Secant of alpha. If you are not very good with trig, my suggestion is label your size. Okay, so alpha is a, our angle of reference. Therefore, the opposite side of alpha would be 4. So this is opposite. The longest side, well, 5 is bigger than 4 and 3, so this is hypotenuse. Therefore, 3 is adjacent. All right. So, 
Let's find the secant of alpha. Now, if you don't remember what the secant is or what is secant, the reciprocal of, we go back over here. So secant and cosine go hand in hand, okay? So then to find the secant of alpha, another Greek letter represents an angle, we can either do hypotenuse divided by adjacent. I'm just going to do HYP over adjacent. Or we can find, let, let me do alpha again. We can find the cosine of alpha and do one over the cosine of alpha. Let's try both ways, okay? So hypotenuse divided by adjacent. So the secant of alpha would be hypotenuse, that is 5, divided by adjacent, which is 3. Now, let's try this one. Well, to find the cosine of alpha, as per Soka Toa, so C-A-H, C for cosine, A for adjacent, H for hypotenuse. So the adjacent would be 3, hypotenuse is 5, that's the cosine of alpha. So then if I do 1 over 3 over 5, well, when I simplify this one, I end up with exactly the same thing. So it's up to you, whichever way you want to solve it, okay? If I don't have to find the cosine, for like here, I was not asked to find the cosine, I would have gone just straight for the secant like this. If I had been required or asked to find the cosine, well, I would have done the second choice, which is this one, okay? Again, up to you guys. Now, what if you got something like this, right? It says, given the right triangle below, find Y. Normally, we're used to having two sides of the triangle, right, to use the Pythagorean theorem. But now, we don't have two sides, we only have one, and one side is represented by the letter Y. Now, in this one, we, I was supposed to tell you what theta is, right? So theta would be, um, I think it was 36.8, I believe 36.8. Hopefully I'm remember, remembering correctly. So theta equals, oops, 36.87 degrees, I believe. That was, that was theta. Okay? I mean, I could, I could have any angle. I just wanted to make, to match these two triangles. Hopefully I will. Now, if that's the case, I have to use trigonometry, right? So my angle of reference is theta, this one over here. So let's see what we have, right? Well, I know 10 is the longest side, right? So I do have the hypotenuse. I don't have any other side. However, I'm being asked to find y, which happens to be the opposite. Wait, let me try it over here. The opposite side of theta. Therefore, if I have theta, hypotenuse, and opposite, well, the function, trigonometric function, which, use, which uses opposite and hypotenuse is sine, right? Sine equals opposite divided by hypotenuse. So I can use that. Let me show you how. So we know that as per Sokatoa, so like this, sine of theta is equal to opposite I'm going to do OPP over hypotenuse. Therefore, my sine of theta will be the opposite. I don't know what it is. I just know it's y divided by 10. I'm going to not use units for now, okay? So we, I have opposite divided by hypotenuse, okay? Now, how do we solve for y? Well, algebra. I'm going to rewrite my equation over here. Sine of theta is equal to y divided by 10. Now, before we move on, I know we have the value for theta. And some of you will want to get your calculator and see what sine of 36.87 is. Don't do that yet. 
okay? My suggestion is don't do that yet. Learn to solve for uh, your desired variable prior to substitution or plugging your numbers in, okay? Now let's solve for y. Well, I just multiply times 10, right? This one cancels. I do the same over here. Therefore, y equals 10 times the sign, you know, I don't want to write it like that. I want to have 10 in parentheses. 10 times the sign. Now it would add the theta, which is 36.87 degrees. Let's see what that is. For that, I will use my calculator, which is Desmo Scientific. There you go. I need to make sure I have degrees, right? This is degrees, you see DEG. This is radians, I'm using degrees now. So I'm going to have parentheses 10 times the sine of 36.87, uh oh, 87. And there you go, 6.00. Oh, so I got the angle right. So that's how you can find a missing side when you're given an angle and only one side. It works with, you can have the adjacent, you could have the, the um, opposite or hypotenuse. You use the same process, right? Maybe not identical algebra, but the same process. And the side is six as we were expecting it to be. And then after that, if I know that y equals six, or six meters, right, because this represents something, then I can use Pythagorean theorem to find uh, the adjacent. Or if I really want to have fun, I can use more trigonometry, right, to, to find the adjacent side. Okay, last thing. Dimensional analysis. This is just converting units. That's how we use it in physics, to convert units. And let's see. Convert 60 miles per hour to meters per second. M slash S is meters per second, okay? So during the first few classes, if you say M slash S, I will forgive you. After that, I will not forgive you, okay? So I'm going to rewrite miles per hour differently, right? Because that's how we do it in English, but miles per hour, we could say 60 miles per hour. What I want you to see is the units, right? And we have to convert that into meters per second. Notice we have two different rates or, or kind of like fractions. You can think of it as fractions. Now we're going to use a t-chart, okay? So we start this way. You start with what you have in this way. 60 miles per hour, right? Then let's start the t-chart. T -chart. So if I have miles over here on top, the way I can cancel the, those miles is by having miles. Uh, think of it as being in the numerator. So now I want to have miles in the denominator. So... I know I'm gonna have miles over here. I need I need to convert to meters, right? So I know how many uh, meters are then in a mile, but I'm gonna use kilometers. Well, no, no, you know what? Yeah, use kilometers just to make it a bit more fun, right? So one mile. Let me do like a one here. Equals one point six zero nine kilometers. Don't worry about knowing those units. Normally, I will give you like one kilometer equals this or stuff like that, okay? And notice how my miles now will cancel. Okay. Now, let's deal with the kilometers. Again, I have kilometers in as part, part of the numerator. So, I need to have kilometers over here. Now, I can convert one kilometer to meters. One kilometer, kilo is the prefix uh, for 1,000, so it is 1,000 meters. Notice how now my kilometers will cancel, and I have meters. Now I have meters as the numerator, which is what I want. Now let's deal with the denominator, right? I have to have seconds. Well, I'll extend my t-chart even more. Now I have hours as the denominator, 
So to cancel those hours, I need to have hours as the numerator. So one hour equals 60 minutes. And again, I cancel hour with hour. I don't want meters per minute. I want meters per second. Therefore now, since I have minutes over here as the denominator, I will have one minute as the numerator. And you know that that's 60 seconds as per seconds. And notice how my minutes cancel. Now I have seconds as par, part of the denominator. This is what I want, okay? Meters over here per second. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the numbers. I know my units are right, okay? So I'm going to take the numbers in this way. So I'm going to take all the numbers on top. So 60 times 1.609 times 1,000 times 1. I know you don't have to do times 1. I'm just, I just want to include it for completion. Times 1, right? I don't like to use this because that means cross product for me. So I just use dot, okay? And that's going to be, oh, so okay. I'm going to get a number here, right? I'm going to divide by the bottom in this way. So I should have a 1, right? Because I know this like 1 hour. So 1 times 1 this one, right? Times one again, times 60 for the minutes, times 60 for the seconds. So now I need to find the number here and then the number here, okay? So let's use a calculator. I don't wanna do it in my head. So there you go, decimals again. Let's start another one. So we have 60 times 1.609 times 1,000 times 1. And then we had another one. Well, let me move this a little bit. There you go, so we can see. Times um, 1. And I have 96,540. I'm going to write it down. 96, oh wait. I can't do that because I'm using decimals. Okay, okay. We'll remember those numbers, okay? We'll remember those numbers. Or can I? No, it doesn't let me. Oh, so I have the eraser. Okay, okay. There you go, guys. I can write it, actually. My bad. So 96,540. And I know that's meters, right? My unit on top is meters. Divided by... So this one is 1 times 1, so I'm not going to include those. I know it's 60 times 60, and for that one, I do not need a calculator. I know that's 3,600. So 3,600, uh-oh, 3,600 seconds. Now, t that's technically correct, but I don't, that's, that's not elegant. I don't want to leave it like that. So I'm going to divide 96,540. Divided by 3,600, and this over here, 26.8166, I'm just going to round to 26.82, that is my conversion. So then, I can say, this is equal to, wait, what was that? I forgot already, 26.8, what was it? Yeah, 26.82, 26.82. Twenty-six point eight two meters per second. So I can say sixty miles per hour is the same as twenty-six point eight two meters per second. And that's how you do dimensional analysis, guys. And that's it.